A murder mystery centered around a Filipino family and their restaurant, with some romantic comedy elements sprinkled in for fun. Don't read this book if you're hungry because there is no shortage of detailed food descriptions. Arsenic and Adobo by Maya P. Manansala is the first book in a series called A Tito Rosie's Kitchen Mystery. The book follows Leela, who has just moved back to her small hometown from Chicago after going through a pretty rough breakup. She lives with her Tito Rosie, who owns a Filipino restaurant, and Leela has been charged with trying to get the struggling restaurant back on its feet. There is also a group of Filipino Titas called the Calendar Crew, who I really love, and she also lives with her Lola or grandmother. The book is a murder mystery and it wastes no time kicking the murder and mystery into gear. By the time we start the story, Leela has already been in town for a few months and she's working another day in her Tito Rosie's restaurant. When a food critic who has been writing some pretty negative reviews about their food comes in again to try something else on the menu. Now this would already be bad enough, but it turns out this food critic happens to be Leela's high school sweetheart and her first time love. They have a little bit of a back and forth that turns into a minor confrontation, but Leela ends up serving him anyways because he is a customer after all. Shortly after he finishes his meal, he begins to cough and he falls down onto the floor, apparently dead. An ambulance is called and he's taken off to the hospital, and then shortly after that, the police show up. After all is said and done, Leela turns out to be the prime suspect in what is apparently a murder. The restaurant is closed down for investigation, and without any other choice, Leela now has to set out to find who the true murderer is so they can reopen the restaurant before her and her family lose pretty much everything. This is when the main conflict of the story truly takes off, and I won't talk too much more about the plot because it is a mystery and I don't want to accidentally give anything away. The writing style of the book is light, fun, and easy to read. It truly is a cozy murder mystery. All of the characters are extremely well written, and there are some genuinely funny moments and interactions between them that I really liked. I grew up with several Filipino titas who weren't actually related by blood, but because we spent so much time together, we were pretty much as close as a family could be. I knew every time the auntie showed up, I was in for a fun but slightly stressful scene. It really reminded me of being a kid and being in the other room but hearing my mom and aunts in the kitchen all talking loudly in Tagalog and hearing them name drop me or one of my cousins followed by roaring laughter and just really not knowing what kind of trash talk was going on over there. At one point, the Titas point out that Leela has gained a little bit of weight, and I really felt that in my soul because I've been hearing that kind of talk from a lot of Asian family members throughout my entire life. The story lets this vibe shine through because the Titas want to be helpful, and they do help, but they do it in a way that kind of says, well, we know better than you, and it absolutely drives Leela crazy at times. And then during the more romantic comedy sections of the book, Leela finds herself in a sort of love triangle between herself and two other Asian men, one who is a lawyer and the other is a dentist, and this is absolute catnip for Asian aunties, and it plays out hilariously in the book. The murder mystery itself was very well written, the stakes felt very high, and I could feel time running out as the police were building a case against Leela and her family. And I was suspicious of several characters along the way, but I was still pleasantly surprised at the end when I found out who had actually done it. The book does a great job of seeding doubt and suspicion very slowly and then throwing a curveball at you, forcing you to rethink all of your theories about what could have actually happened. And food is tremendously important throughout this entire book, not only because Leela and her family own a Filipino restaurant, but because food is very important in Filipino culture. Tita Rosie's need to feed all of the people around her despite actively being under investigation for murder just felt too real. Growing up, I couldn't even have friends over for a couple hours after school to play some video games without my mom making a full meal of rice, pancit, or even chicken adobo. And I could tell that the author was intimately familiar with all of these dishes and it was a huge part of their life growing up. And I didn't even notice until I finished the book, but in the back there are actually a couple of recipes that I'm definitely going to try making because the way they're described in the book just sounds so good, and it just conjured up memories of growing up and eating all of these meals all the time. 
Overall, I thought Arsenic and Adobo was a really fun read. I really liked the story and the murder mystery, but what really sold me was the well-written characters and all of the drama they bring to the table. I'll definitely be picking up the other book in the Atita Rosie's Kitchen Mystery series, and I really recommend you pick this up if you're looking for a cozy murder mystery with some romantic comedy vibes and you don't mind being a little bit hungry through the entire read.